let's look at the example where we have one limper, early position, and we're sitting here uh, in middle position. We've got our jacks, and we want to isolate the one limper. So we raise it to four times the big blind plus one per limper. Good. Uh, just one limper in our scenario here. Guy behind us calls our open raise, our two bet cold for five bucks. The three better behind us makes a standard textbook three bet raise to a total of three times the initial raise plus one per cold caller, i.e. 20. Why does he raise it to 20? Well, again, it has to do with the equity. And, and here we're not looking at our two bet column, but we're looking at our three bet column. So this guy raises to 20, and the initial raiser has 31% or needs 30, let's say 32% equity to make that call if he were to go all in. Uh, the same with, the, of course, the first cold caller because they've invested the same amount. Just for the three bet call, the guys need 32% to make that call, or they need 32% of hitting a playable flop. Now, if I only raise to 10, for example, here, these guys are getting pot odds of basically 4 to 1, uh, even better than that, 4.5 to 1. So they only need to hit a playable flop 18% of the time, or if they're pushing all in for 5, they only need to take it down 18% of the time to break even in the very, very long run. This is why, you know, raising to 10 is a bit weak, unless, of course, you have a really strong holding and you want to get called, which is also viable in some circumstances. But when you do so, and people are taking notes and they're playing heads up poker, they're going to say, okay, after the hand, they're going to see you show down, you know, your kings or your aces here with a min raise after an open raiser, a limper, an open raiser, and a cold caller. Uh, min raise here, and they're going to put a little note on you that says min raise uh, in position with kings on a full ring table. But when you raise to 20, it, and you do that standard, right, you make that your standard move, your standard bet size, you're impossible to read. If you make this as a squeeze move with four or five suited, um, or if you make this bet size, um, you know, with your aces, you're completely, completely unreadable based on your bet sizing. Now that um, may or may not be a good case, uh, may or may not be a good thing, but the, the, I mean, the positive aspect of that is that nobody can actually read you, especially online, based on the amount that you bet. If you're always sticking to these uh, principles here that I've, I've listed in red for you guys. So that's how that looks. Um, if, I, if I then raise it up, let's say I raise it up to 25, right? All of a sudden, these guys need 35% equity. Uh, let's say I, I pop it to 40, right? All of a sudden, they need 40% equity to make that call, and so on. And let's say I just push over the top. You know, I think, whatever, it's ridiculous. And these guys now need 45% to call me all in. And which, you know, they'll have when they're playing ace-king against my pair, but whatever. Now, let's say, okay, uh, guy, you know, we made this open raise, we got a cold caller, and then a three bet behind us. And this dude here, for some reason, says, okay, you know, maybe he's on the button, or maybe he's in the small blind or the big blind. He says, no, no, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make this 50 uh, for everybody. All right, so he's going to four bet it to two and a half times. This guy's three bet, making it 50. And here, as, as the rule dictates, he's already, if he's playing a 100 big blind stack, he's already committing half of his stack at 50. So he could just make the $50 bet, right, in the hopes of getting called. But if he's not so certain, it's better that he go ahead and push right now. Because on any given flop, if he gets one call, Right, he's going to have already half of the pot size. So that means even with this $50 bet, you're already looking at a situation where you probably should go ahead and push. Not necessarily, um, but if you do get one three-bet caller, then you definitely want to be pushing because you're already at two-thirds of your stack. I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, let's say for, yeah, okay, just educational purposes, he then makes the standard two and a half times bet. Let's say, okay, this guy checked out. Just open raise to isolate the limper. Um, we get one guy behind us who then three bets us to 15, and this guy makes it 37.50. All right, two and a half times the three bet size. Okay, um, what's the equity that we need? All right, we're calling what now? A four bet. Okay, so small blind calling the four bet. Our four bet needs 38 percent, and all the way down. 
big blind needs a little less. Um, limper, of course, exactly the same as a big blind at that point. And the initial raiser needs 35% equity in order to call that 4-bet cold, say. The 3-better needs only 27% to make the same call. And that's how it works out. Uh, the assumption here is, of course, that everybody folds to this person here. So um, this guy makes the 4-bet, fold, 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 actions on the initial raiser, and he needs 35% equity to make that call and break even in the long run. Again, if he's to go all in, and of course he needs a 35% probability of hitting a playable flop if he still has um, a stack to play with after the fact, which in this case he would, uh, being a big stack player. <laughs> all right. Uh, very good. This guy that makes it 37, in our example, uh, let's go ahead and put our caller back in there, and our cold caller, and somebody behind him says, okay, I'm done with this. <laughs> we're we're gonna uh, we're gonna play for stacks, and he pushes over the top for the hundred. Total pot size is now 182, uh, 50, and this guy pops it to five. Uh, makes a five bet, pushes all in, as very often you should, of course. Um, if you're super deep stacked, let's say these two guys are playing 250 big blind stacks. Well, okay, he only raised it to 50. Um, you nah, okay that would. Even then, you'd still be committing half your stack. But uh, let's say these guys are playing 400 big blind stacks. It does actually happen live, especially. Um, uh, this guy makes it 50. You can make it 150 here uh, as a 5 bet and potentially then fold if somebody comes over the top and you don't have ace. You know, playing deep stacks is a bit different, but um, as a principle, again, 2.5 to 3.5 times the previous raise amount um, is where you need to be as a general rule. Um, and again, anytime you're committing half your stack, go ahead and push it. Uh, a lot of people would say anytime you're pushing a third of your stack, go ahead and push it uh, pre or post flop. So what are the equities that we need here when somebody does make that 5-bet all-in for 100 big blinds? Well, they're right here. All right, and this guy needs everybody else to fold. If he's making a 5-bet uh, push as a bluff, he needs everybody to fold more than half the time in order to break even in the long run as a pure bluff. All right, and the remaining guys need the respective equity to make that call. That's uh, essentially how that works out. Guys, you can play with this a bit. Um, you can give it multiple multiple limpers, and then your standard raise would be here for seven. Uh, you know, let's say you get one caller after the fact. If you are to three bet, it's already at 28. Um, let's say there's a guy who just decides to call that on top of it. Um, and these guys are now calling, everybody's calling three bets. Right? So they need respectively 27% more or less and 22% for the initial raises and cold callers. Yeah, and that's, that's how that works out. Um, this guy here, of course, if he's making his 28 buck uh, squeeze raise as a bluff, he needs all, <laughs> what do we want to do? Five, six, seven of these guys to fold up to 60% of the time in order to break even in the long run. Yeah, and that's how that would work out. Um, again, here, already the four bets a push. So, yeah, that's more or less, more or less how it is. And, yeah, again, this calculator is, of course, available to everybody on our side. Uh, underneath here, we've got just general advice. It's more or less the outline. Um, I'll let you guys just pause the video and scroll through that as you like. Yeah, and again, yeah, we'll cover this in relatively great detail here in these theoretical videos. And, of course, this is all very, very fundamental information, information that you need also when you're watching the, um, the coaching sessions or the, the recordings of, of live play or online play. Um, all of this is very fundamental knowledge that you should have committed to memory. But